And I want to welcome everyone to the Tuesday, December 7th meeting of the Personnel Administration Committee of the Monroe County Council. It is, uh, we're doing this via Zoom. This is the last meeting, theoretically, of this iteration of this current pack until the council reorganizes in January. And so we're called to order. We have a couple of items of substance on our schedule today. Go ahead, Kim. I need you to uh, roll call the members present, please. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Iverson. Here. Councillor Hawk. Don't see Councillor Hawk. Uh, but she may be joining us in just a bit. Of note, Councillor Iverson is the appointee of the County Council taking uh, former Councillor Spoonmore's place on PAC for this last meeting. He's going he's gonna to jump in here to fill in, and then uh, we'll see down the road what happens with him. Uh, Councillor Deckard, I do see Councillor Hawk just joined. Awesome. Awesome. We'll give her a and second I, to connect. And I just left another meeting and trying to put food in my mouth as we speak, so <laughs> I'm listening. And I understand that. I understand that. Thank you, Councillor Hawk. So we'll note that Councillor Hawk is here. We have a full three members of PAC. <laughs> Item number two today is the probation department and specifically a review of WIS recommendation regarding the evidence-based practices coordinator probation officer position. I see that Linda Brady has joined us. Welcome, Ms. Brady. Always good Thank to see you. you. Thank you. Good to see you. And I will just open this up. I assume PAC members have had an opportunity to review the WIS documents, and I wanted to see if Ms. Brady or Michelle had any comments related to anything we've received back from WIS. I had a couple of uh, suggested corrections for the job description that were just to make it consistent with all the other probation officers that WIS had written uh, for our department. I sent those to Kim and I believe she sent those to WIS. No, um, what I want to say is these did not significantly change the um, job description. So after conferring with Margie, since these are just in order to bring uh, the job description aligned with the other probation officer job descriptions, the, this will not need to go back to PAC or uh, back to WIS. What uh, PAC needs to do is review the additions to the job descriptions and um, that Linda is proposing, and then you can either forward it with a positive or a negative onto council for final voting. And then once council does that, then I will forward that information onto WIS and let them know the changes that have been made. But since this is not going to be changing a classification or anything, it does not have to go back to WIS initially. I see Margie Rice's hand, Margie. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, echo that these seem to be more or less Scrivener errors. Um, and we do want to create a clear record uh, to make sure that we send that record to Wagner or when she in case they have questions uh, or any concerns. And we also want to make sure that we always, in every case, have good communication back and forth between the county and WIS when we change job descriptions uh, or you know even a small minor change like this, just so what we have on record is the same thing that they have on record. Thank you. Yes. I question, and I guess this would be for Ms. Brady, I think. Um, the changes are highlighted in uh, fluorescent, right, on our draft? Do you know? Yes, um, they were. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. And then <laughs> go ahead. Do you want to speak to these at all? And I'm trying to find the raise hand. I've changed from one kind of a Zoom to another, so now it's changing. Um, before we move forward, I wanted to uh, ask a question. Sure. Uh, it's kind of a history question because yes. years ago, and, and I guess I just assumed it still was the case. I should have checked it, but, and I really didn't get an answer back from legal, so I don't know what the 
decision was. But it used to be that if a job was, if the position was to be covered by a grant, that on the job description or some other document, but I think it was the job description where the applicant signed, and this is not just partic about this particular position, I'm saying just in general grant positions and this, um, where they signed that they acknowledged it was a grant position. It, it, I, uh, those of you who've been around forever, you recall that, I'm certain. Actually, I don't remember ever having anything signed that people acknowledged it was a grant position. Uh, what I've done just for our department, because we have so many positions that are funded by grants and user fees, we have staff uh, right when they're hired, sign an acknowledgement that they understand that we're funded by various types of fees and grants, and that if we were to lose a position, that seniority would be uh, taken into account in terms of um, if we had to lay anybody off. I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but I sent that, I thought I sent it to the full council about a month ago, um, or maybe not maybe our liaisons but anyway we we have everybody sign that regardless of whether their positions funded by county or not well uh, i don't know, ever remember i don't ever remember having the job description itself say that it's funded by a grant well linda thank you for sharing that with me maybe that is a document that i have in my memory i just know that at some point in time we had it right, was clear yeah. that if it was a grant position and if the grant dried up that they were not guaranteed employment uh, and since we operate so much on grants I just want to make sure that we are covering in some way, really notifying these people so that they won't. Right. I think once before it was something at the youth shelter when they lost that big grant because they didn't get it turned in in time. I and at the what time you're the county about. was paying those bills, uh, paying salaries. And so there was a difficulty trying to cover payroll. So that's the reason for the question. If it's not a part of the job description, then it would not be a part of this discussion. Looks like Ms. Rice. Go yeah, ahead. I did. Um, I think this is related to this conversation. I did uh, recall an email conversation about this and <clears throat> Kim Shell had replied on December 2nd said that she was not aware of um, any a document that an employee signs to recognize yeah, grants. It's not what she thinks it is different. That's what I'm going to tell. Let's uh, let's do this. Um, let's hold conversation. I'm going to recognize folks because I've got cross chatter and I'm having trouble hearing. Uh, Miss Rice, continue. Please. Yeah, I I just I believe that um, Kim Shell had addressed this question just recently and said that she was not aware of a document that an employee signs with regards to recognizing grant funded positions. Now, having said that, there always could be um, a clause, just an informational clause, but in the salary ordinance if the council felt comfortable with it, recognizing that, you know, to the extent that grant funded positions are, um, are no longer funded, that, you know, either the position uh, will not be funded and, um, or the council would have to appropriate additional dollars. I mean, if that was some sort of disclaimer that you wanted to put in somewhere, we could come up with language for you. All right, and uh, I think the auditor had comments. Yes, what Marty is remembering is back in the day, we wanted to do this so that we could, it would or the problems that we have would never happen again. However, groups like Linda Brady and some of the courts that had lots of grants, uh, like lots of grants said it wouldn't work that way using one document because we would go hierarchy on longevity and seniority and we were okay with that. So what we did was we created like a little one page acknowledgement that they signed when they took the job. If you were in a, if you were in a, a department where there was only one or two positions because they wouldn't have the, they didn't have the ability to do that. They would, if they lost that grant, they would lose they would have to lose that position. And so we were having them right at the beginning of the grant. If you were hired specifically for one grant and when it was gone, that person would have to be gone. We did it for them, but that's been years ago and I haven't seen any of those documents and those grants are all gone now. So, so it's really apples and oranges 
but I understand what Marty is saying. We want to make sure that we can gracefully exit someone if a grant dries up and there's no other place to put them. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. President, I yes. speak? Uh, and that in a large part is because Ms. Brady has been so excellent about being able to look for where she can move the employees around under one grant or another grant. Um, uh, my concern is that yes, we have um, in the past had to figure out how we were going to cover salaries. And so I think that's an important uh, a thing to look at, but whether or not it would be this committee or the committee, um, you know, the entire council. Um, but thank you. Uh, Auditor Smith for making sure I didn't think I'd lost my mind altogether. <laughs> I knew it was there someplace. That's a good, that's good, that is good historical perspective. And it certainly sounds like something that the council as a whole might uh, be able to entertain. And certainly we can uh, confer with the council leadership and uh, see if that's something as a whole beyond this particular description. I'm gonna open it. If there's no comments on this description or, or on that item anymore. Let's let's see if there's any questions on, or further discussion on this particular job description we've received back okay. from with. I did want to. I have a few people here from my team. If they would would um, show themselves on the screen. So um, Chelsea Walters, who is here, she is our continuous quality improvement supervisor and pretrial director. Becca Streit is her supervisor, our community corrections director and deputy chief probation officer. And also with this is Leah Baker, who is going to be taking over this new position. She is a longtime probation officer. Actually, she started with our department as a probation officer assistant back when she was a student. And so she's been here since she was a baby uh, with, our, with our department for a long, long time. So a few years ago, we actually applied with the Indiana Department of Correction uh, for a grant to have a continuous quality improvement, evidence-based practices, full-time person. And that what became Becca back in the day. And after Becca got promoted to community corrections director, uh, then um, Chelsea took over that position. But the uh, pretrial program that was a surprise. That wasn't something we planned on having to do. And we didn't have a position that was gonna be a pretrial director. So the Department of Correction let us have Chelsea's position, then Becca's be a slash title. So she is both the continuous quality improvement supervisor as well as our pretrial director. But because she has to have so much of her time doing pretrial work, we still needed someone to do the evidence-based practices, the training of our staff, the ongoing um, uh, coaching that they need, reviewing videos, hence where Lee is, this new position is, uh, is coming into play. So I just wanted you to be able to put a face with, uh, with the name for these people and, um, and the position, and we're very excited to have this position. Lee's going to have a lot of work on her hands, uh, but helping Chelsea out with training our staff and keeping them their skills up with evidence-based practices. So thank you for the team to be here. Thank you for joining us team. We appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedules to, to join our committee today. Leah, welcome. We're, we're so excited for you in this, this role. We uh, are too. Thank you. Counselors, uh, any questions or other comments on this item of, on our agenda? Yeah, Councilor Iverson. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Deckard. Uh, I, you know, evidence-based practices are so very important. I'm really appreciative, uh, uh, Linda, that you brought the entire team here uh, because this is just so important to the way that we do work here in Monroe County. And, and one of the, the things that I think is very interesting about the job description before us is that the, the job description is so objective. It's taking those evidence-based practices and continuously using them to improve the services that we're doing here in Monroe County. And yet one of the changes uh, in, in the job description is that an individual must fulfill that statutory requirement to be of good moral character, which is highly subjective. So I just yeah. thought that was a, a little interesting uh, as that came across our, our task. Uh, Leah, I, I'm sure that you are a fantastic <laughs> moral character uh, and uh, th really thankful that you're, you're joining the team. Thank yeah, you. that's a, an interesting thing for probation officers that, 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 that is actually a statutory requirement to be of good moral character. 
yeah yeah interesting stuff mm -hmm. other questions or comments from council members if not i will entertain uh the chair will entertain a motion on this item to dispense with it is there any will on this council to uh move forward so moved all right i'm going to read that and miss rice tell me if we're okay i've got a motion to prove this evidence-based practices coordinator, probation officer, SO, special occupations, job category, and now accept this recommendation to move forward on to council. Have I got that right? Ms. Rice? Yes, you have that correct. Awesome, thank you. Uh, do we have a second on Councilor Iverson's motion? A second. Got a motion and a second on the floor. Any further discussion on this item? Seeing none, I'll ask for a roll call vote. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. Everybody have a wonderful day. We're going to move on now to item number three, discussion of council administrator position. And for this, I'm going to open it up to, I believe, uh, on staff side to the auditor and Ms. Shell. Um, also, Margie's involved with this. So all we're asking is that the report to name change from council president to uh, auditor which the way it's sort of aligned statutorily and this may be a temporary uh change it may be we may ask you to change this back here in the, after uh, late spring early summer uh but this will help um next year's election year of course and in addition to that we have a new council president and we're gonna have new counselors and this will allow uh Kim to be part of our staff again so that she can have greater support. Okay. All right, Ms. Rice, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? No, I think that that sums it up. Okay. Do you have any uh, questions or comments from PAC members? Um, I have a, a question and once again, I don't see where I'm supposed to be raising my hand. Um, <laughs> I, uh, as you all know, we've had a, a major concern about cross-training. And I say that every time we have an opportunity to speak together. So will this uh, assist in getting some cross-training so that if Kim's on vacation, I should say, Kim, if that position is on vacation or out for an extended period of time, that someone else can pick it up and go from day one. And we exactly. need that with... We need that just like what, like we would have to with payroll. We need to have that with this position because um, those job duties really by, by statute is set to be the responsibility of the auditor. And we, the council, don't want to be the one holding, you know, a heavy hand here if we're not able to move forward with some of these job descriptions. So how will that intertraining Will that be assisting this or will it just go on as usual or what's our plan for that? Okay, that's a good question, Marty, and it's very important. So I appreciate you bringing that up and I'm really sorry I didn't address that initially. So the issue before was, I think Kim was needing support, so she was trying to get Megan to help her. Well, Megan was a Comet 3 and, and Kim's a Pat 5, so now Megan's asked, being asked to do Pat 5 work, which is significantly more detailed and paid higher. So that, that was not the right thing. Megan is supposed to be cross-trained with Anita and it does the same job with the commissioner so that they can take each other, help each other out. And we're, we're working on that separate. You don't really see that um, because the job description is already set up that way. However, uh, Kim's cross-trained person would be uh, the financial director, who's also the same level. I believe she, you're exactly the same levels. Uh, that way, heaven forbid, something would happen to um, to Kim. Um, maybe, you know, and I hate to say it, it's not always bad because remember the, the financial director and the treasurer hit Powerball for top ticket. So she 
she uh, resigned due to being rich. And so sometimes good things happen to people, right? <laughs> We've literally had two top lottery winners. We had Mr. McMurtry, the weights and measure guy, hit Hoosier lottery top ticket, and the treasurer's lady hit Powerball top ticket. So sometimes it's a good thing. However, getting back to Marty's question about how are we going to cross train? Absolutely, there needs to be cross training. And it is my desire for her and Kim, Kim, Kim and Bree to work very closely together. It aligns, it fits with the job descriptions, it fits with the levels, and it just makes the most sense. Thank you. I see Councillor Iverson's hand. Yeah, following up on that, and not in any type of a contingency manner in case you know someone leaves or wins the lottery, but in terms of the day-to-day, -day, will any functionality of this position change? Uh, good question. So what's going to happen right now, there's no one really to go behind Kim and check her work and help her out if she gets busy and she gets pulled off one assignment onto another assignment. So we have, uh, we have an internal auditor and that internal auditor is going to, to um, I don't want to say be Kim's grunt, but we will have a person there to check numbers, do all kinds of uh, data analysis for Kim. And that seems to be the major thing that Kim needs help with. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while, it's bouncing ideas off of people. And Bree is amazing. I don't know how well you know her, uh, Peter. She's pretty no. amazing. She, so it's a good she's, a bit, she's amazing, yeah. Yeah, it's a good person for Kim to work with. Uh, very similar work styles. They're both very hard workers. They're both very conscientious. Um, so uh, so we're going to help her in twofold. One fold way is we're going to be there to do it, you know, to do the background work for her so that she doesn't have to check something four times, right? And so that she has internal auditing. And then we're also going to be there to help her if she would have to be out, we'll, you know, for like a week or, you know, Kim really scheduled her vacation around your guys' council schedule. It, it's, but you can't do that for a family emergency. So like, like right now, my husband's having a major family emergency and I probably will be out tomorrow because of it. And there's nothing, when you, you have to have backup. Well, he has a tiny family, so he has no backup, right? And so, but here as a family, a work family, we have backup. And we want to make sure that she she can, uh, when she left for vacation, she was kind of distraught. I said, no, just go, don't forget about this place. Don't even think about this place while you're gone. If there's any, you know, really statutorily, it's all my work, right? It's all my, I right, signed right, right. for it. I'm going to cover it. It's my ass, excuse my French, but it is. And I don't want someone to think they're taking a hit for me. We're going to be here. We're going to back Kim up. We're going to give her the, the backup she should have had all along. We're going to make it happen. Um, and then in six months, if you guys don't like it and you want to make a change, well, that's up to you guys. Well, thank you for that response. I'm particularly fond of council administrator and the work that is done. So I'm glad to hear that functionality won't change all that much. You guys probably won't even see a difference. Well, all right. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. I did have one. Have, Go ahead, Councilor. What I see this as being is a major relief uh, stressor uh, for our council administrator because um, when you feel like you have everything on your shoulders, you can you don't even feel like you can um, rush home if you have a sick family member or whatever. Or if you do, you, you're thinking the whole time uh, of your responsibilities elsewhere. So you, it's hard to put your 100% into anything because you're divided so many places. Um, and so uh, this is just not a healthy uh, situation for any one person to be in. And so I think this should uh, assist in helping her have a that position have a very Merry Christmas. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Hawk. And I, I'd add this comment is that we are definitely, uh, particularly in this council, we have been in a year of trying to figure out what we can do to make the lives of county employees and all the facets that they exist for public service to the people of this county to make that process somewhat better, somewhat easier. We'll never make it perfect. And um, it, it's a, always an evolution in process, and, and then some. I see Margie Rice's hand. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that we uh, state for the record that this kind of a change 
falls within one of the sort of exceptions that we talked about at the council. Remember, you guys were talking about a moratorium at the last council and not making significant changes to classifications or job descriptions. This is the sort of reporting change that won't change a title, won't change a classification, won't change a salary, and would fall within the sort of exceptions, although you didn't specifically list them um, and make a, you know, a, an arbitrary list. This is this is not a significant change. So when other departments come saying, hey, the council changed their, you know, their job description, it's just a minor reporting structure change. Now, of course, that does have to be approved by PAC and, and ultimately approved by the council. That's not to say that any other department can just ad hoc in the field change it, um, but it is not changing the classification, the salary or the title. And that was the clarification question I wanted to ask you. We vote on this and then council votes on this. Is that correct, Ms. Rice? Yes, that's correct. Okay. I'll entertain a, a motion or other comments from PAC members. Move to uh, forward this to the county council with a move to approve. Thank you, Councilor Hawk. We have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? I second. Now I've got a motion and a second. Any further discussion on this item? Seeing none, I'll ask for a roll call vote. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Thank you very much. And I, I want to reiterate, I appreciate very much uh, the auditor, Michelle, Ms. Rice, uh, everybody punching together um, as a team, uh, council members, et cetera. This is, county government only works if it happens that way. And, and this is a good example of that. Next item, we have approval of summary minutes as presented. I have reviewed those minutes. I was pretty happy with them. They reflect some of the hard work we've done this year. I'll accept a motion on those minutes if anyone has one. So moved. Got a motion to have a second. Second. Can you raise your hand? Michelle. So um, this is a good example of how we're cross-training. Sorry, before you voted, I wanted to mention something. So in the future, you're going to see who submitted those minutes for whatever minutes they are, and also who checked those minutes. So if they're regular council minutes, which this isn't, but if they were regular council minutes, you'll see they're going to be submitted by Megan and reviewed by Anita so that each per, each of the two people know what the other one's doing. So if anybody would have to be out, they will know exactly the last thing what they did was, where they were at with each thing. Okay, so, thank but you. But that kind of follows along with what Marty was talking about. So I <laughs> wanted to mention that. Thank you very much. We've got a motion and a second on the minutes. We will, any further discussion, we'll go ahead and ask for a roll call vote. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. I'll now move to item number uh, 11, PAC member, it should be item number five, PAC member mm -hmm. comments. Oops, oops. Anybody? I was like, I know we didn't do that much. We did a little. Right. I, now you see why I did that where I did it. Right? We, I thought I'd slept through it. Well, it's, it's been one of those years. Any comments from PAC members? Councilor Iverson. I just wanted to briefly say that uh, I can already tell that the WIS recommendations and guidelines for how we're moving forward by protecting these job descriptions is working. And I really wanted to thank uh, Margie Rice for keeping us on the right path and as well as council administrator. Uh, you can really tell in this meeting that, uh, that we're taking this seriously and uh, I look forward to the good work that we can do with these WIS recommendations. Thank you. I would like to add that um, we bring forward with for some consideration something or at least consider uh, about uh, the caveat about the grant positions it and what brought that more to mind now than ever before is with the annexation 
uh, our revenues will not be where they once were, where we could make up the difference if we lost a grant. And um, since we operate so much with grants, uh, I think we need to do something to recognize that we won't always be able to cover the grant positions um, and keep them under county general or some other fund. Especially we get, we've, we've moved a lot of expenses over into our public safety and we might need that for other things. I know everybody thinks there's gonna be a monumental jail tax go through, but that remains to be seen. In the meantime, we need to, um, so I don't know whether this would be a suggestion coming from PAC to the greater council, if that is appropriate or, or not. It's just my, my concern. Sure, I, I will add to that. I, I do think it is a, uh, I think it should be a consideration that we have very candid discussions, not only with county employees about grant funding, but also with the, the taxpayers. I, I often don't believe, I probably didn't say that right, but I, I don't think that people understand how much in grant dollars, uh, folks like Linda Brady, Miss Whitmer on here, uh, Miss Cottle, that they're bringing that show uh, in, in, home to this county in hard work, but also for our folks and our, and our people. And I think having an honest discussion about that could be a, a potential council item to, to consider that we are very frank about that. Um, those of us in elected and political positions know that um, the reality is, is that you do your job until the voters tell you no. Um, and that's a reality that we know. I think that with grant funding, we equally need to be very honest about that. And I certainly uh, would love to see the council add this as, a, as an item of discussion, not to scare people, but to be realistic. I see Michelle's hand. Um, I, I can work with Margie on a statement that we can add to the salary ordinance regarding this, and then we could present it to council um, as a discussion item at the uh, next meeting. Yeah, and again, that uh, should be a determination of, of council leadership about that with a discussion right. with you. But I, I, I do think that language that's not frightening, but language that's realistic is always something we in public service should think about. Good Lord, we are heading towards two years of this pandemic. I felt like I've said that in a few meetings, but that March is getting closer. And you just never know. And we don't want to think about that. We don't want to hope for that, but um, certainly that'd be a, a worthy discussion. I do want to say as a final comment for me, we've got some department heads here and some other great folks. And I want to thank everybody as we get near the holidays. Um, and as we get near the end of this county's year, we're all so grateful to you, particularly for sitting through our meetings and our processes. Our goal always is to make the county a little bit stronger to support you. It may not always feel that way, but I sincerely want to offer that to you. So thanks to everyone. This theoretically is the last PAC meeting of this year for this body that's convened, but if not, we'll do this all again sometime down the road. I think with nothing else, we will go ahead and adjourn PAC. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all.